So we are here in Houston with Jaren. How y'all doing? So excited to <laughs> finally meet Jaren in person. It's been so Vice cool. Person. Yes, it's been so mm -hmm. cool to finally meet some of my long-term subscribers. I feel like a friend. Yes. Even though, you know, we no, never met. No, we are friends. I feel like we are friends. No, for it, definitely chemistry. Like, you know who yes. you are. Like, yeah. And we've chatted, you know, we've, we've chatted, like, for a long time, like, just talking about stuff and talking yeah. about different types of things and sure. bouncing ideas and... So it's just been really cool to meet meet some of you guys in person. Yeah, it's been awesome. I gotta meet the rest of these babes. Yes, you have to meet Queen and Ori. Yeah. Queen is so cool. Like, and we haven't met Ori yet. We're gonna do Ori tomorrow. So it's nice to be in Houston and and meet y'all. It's my first time in Houston. I never. Oh, so you've never been? No, I had never been here before. Okay. Yeah. See, I thought you already been, but it makes sense. Mm -mm. So I had been to Texas before, but I had only been to Austin because oh, okay. I went and I went for South by Southwest. Okay. So I I've never been to South by Southwest. It's cool. It's a lot of white people, but I've, I've heard like it's very um, like one of those free thinking places. Mm -hmm. I've heard I've heard people compare it to California, but I don't. Yes, everyone always says when I tell people like, "Oh yeah, I've been to Texas, but I've only been to Austin." People always used to be like, "Oh no, you haven't been to Texas. Yeah, you gotta, like you yeah. haven't really seen." I, I have Ace Town first in line for sure. Yeah. And, you know, Dallas gives me more of. Um, like an upscale energy, mm -hmm. like more bougier a little bit, but not really. The as, same as Houston? Yeah, Houston just feels more authentic. So yeah. that's why I'm probably going to stay out here if I stay in Texas. So we were in Dallas before this, and that was also my first time in Dallas. Mm, okay. And we did an interview with Katie. Shout out to Katie, who she was from Dallas. And she did say, she said there's like a little bit of a rivalry between no, for sure. Dallas for and sure. Houston. For so sure. what's up with the rivalry? What's up with the rivalry between Dallas and Houston? You just said I, Dallas is a little more bougie, so... I mean, I like Dallas, too, because it, it's just a different vibe. Like, even if you think about um, sports, um, if you think about the artists from Erica Badu being from Dallas, mm -hmm. uh, but then you think about, like, say, UGK being from... They're from Beaumont, but that's still technically Houston, mm -hmm. if you ask certain people. It's just more of a... Houston people seem, like, more grounded, you know, like, to where... Dallas, it's just, it gives me more fancy. But I'm not saying they're not grounded because Erica Badu obviously is, some will say she's a little out there, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But I mean, she's real in terms of what she represents. But yeah. for me, Houston, like, it's just something about something Slim about Thug, Houston. Paul Wall. Yes. It's something about, like I said, Slim Thug, I got to listen to Already Platinum while I'm down here. Yeah, have to. You know, like, if you go if you go out into the nightlife out here, you know, strip club closer is big out here, you know, mm -hmm. you know and I've, I'm not against strip clubs, you know, I'll go every now and then, and even if you go to strip clubs, the vibes is different, you know, even if you go to bars or brunches, the vibes is different, you just get more of a home vibe here, mm. you know, to where when I went to Dallas, it kind of gave me, they, Southern hospitality still exists out there, obviously, but it's not, with Houston, it just seems like you could actually go to somebody's house and crash out, eat mm -hmm. their food to where Dallas, I just didn't, and I used to work in Dallas, too, you know, because contract work, being a contractor, I just feel more home, you know, just more of a. And then the competition with sports, Cowboys, <laughs> Texas is huge on football. Texas is huge on football. Boo, yeah, Cowboys. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a Cowboys fan. I'm a Raider fan. I'm from California. So. I'm from D.C., so, you know, we're no longer the Washington Redskins. We're now the Washington team. But, you know, our number one rivalry. So, so are they ever going to change that name or? They're saying that they're going to give it another name, but they haven't yeah, said what it's going to be. That's long. Overdue. They have like suggestions, and I, I don't know if it's gonna be like a vote or how it's gonna go. But I mean, they're saying that they're gonna for the all of last season it was the Washington the Washington yeah. team. Mm -hmm. But you know, last season was like COVID season, and so I guess it just wasn't really that important, that high up on the radar. No, that's but not. now, and I think I, it'll take some time. Yeah, I after think. like the the racial reckoning and all that, people are just like. We can't, it can no longer be nah, what it is. Even a, though I was shocked, like, as yeah. somebody that's born and raised in D.C. And I've never been to D.C. Oh, you've never been to never D.C.? Never been to D.C. Oh, my I've gosh. never tried the mumbo song. Like, oh! I, I, I've never tried. You I, gotta try it. And I grew up listening to, like, you know, D.C. artists, oh you know, obviously, goodness. but I've never yeah, tried it. Yeah, you gotta it. try never, it. It looks good, though. I watch a lot of YouTube food channels, so. They sell it now in Target. I don't know if you can get it in Target I, I, down here, but. Would that be the same, though, as if. They sell the Capital City, which is made in D.C. by D.C. Okay. residents. Okay. Okay. And it, you have to get like that one, like that brand, but it's really, really good, and I, it really tastes like the real. I'm probably gonna wait till I visit DC I mean, just so, wait, yeah, yeah, just so I can experience the. If you, my recommendation would be to go to Mayflower. Mayflower. That's the carryout that I think you should go Mayflower. to. Yeah, and if you're gonna order it, you gotta get chicken wings, 
with fries, salt, pepper, ketchup, mambo sauce. Okay, so who's in the kitchen? A crackhead better be in the kitchen or else... No, like in terms you of You don't like want it. I don't Asian, know. I'm sorry. That was my first thought. Black, a crackhead. No, no, no black, are blacks cooking it? Asians cooking Oh, um, the Mayflowers carry out, so it would probably be, yeah, Asians. It'd probably be Chinese. And Asians cook. I feel like Asians might cook... Share the same skill a lot in of terms do. of a lot. I mean, like you have Korean. What is it? Korean fried chicken yeah. and, and, and stuff like, like that. You yeah. Know, so I'll be lying if I say I didn't you, like. You you have to go to DC. Like you have to go to DC. Our but like I was saying, our number one rivals since forever have been the Dallas Cowboys. Like okay, well, every yeah, single year. Same yeah, like okay. every single year on Thanksgiving. Even though I don't celebrate Thanksgiving, that's a fake holiday. Yeah, I, don't, I don't celebrate it either. But every single year on Thanksgiving, like that used to be the game because yeah. it was like. Mm-hmm. Cowboys versus Indians, yeah. like mm-hmm. the Redskins versus the Cowboys. So I just can't, like I can't, like I'm like sorry to any Dallas Cowboy fans. I mean, not really, I'm nah, not really okay. sorry, but I'm like sorry. Dallas Cowboys, like we just don't, <laughs> yeah. like we just don't. We're not sorry about nothing. I'm me not. and the Dallas Cowboys, we just don't get along like that. I, I was saying, I never thought they would change the name, and I do know that, like to this day, like my mother is probably still gonna be like hail to the Redskins. Oh, <laughs> like, so your mom's a Redskin. Yeah, okay, okay. everyone in DC. They Everyone that's really you. from DC, I feel like, is a you. fan of the team. So that's the same with like Wizards. No. 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 <laughs> no. It's something about the. Okay, so I don't know what it is. Our team has not won shit, has not won a Super Bowl in forever. We suck. We're constantly mm-hmm. losing. But people are still fans of the team just because. Like, our parents are fans of the team. Yeah, our grandparents yeah. are fans of the team. Mm-hmm. Our great-grandparents were fans of the team. Like yeah, it's, it's, a part of, it's a part of the family history. It's a part history. of the family yeah. history, yeah. yeah. Like, the culture of, like, you know, like, we go, we go out to the stadium. Um, it's not FedEx. It's not FedEx Field anymore, is it? It's still called that? Okay. Like, you go out to the stadium and people tailgate. Like, I know people that their whole lives, they've been season ticket holders. Yeah, okay. And in their entire life, lifetime... Fact. We've never won. <laughs> We've never gone it, to the Super Bowl. Like that's not. Matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. it doesn't matter. Like that's not why they have season tickets. Like that's not why they have a whole room in their basement full of fat heads. But if you think about it, the, the Redskins represent so much. It, it, you, you know yeah, what I'm like just the just, name alone. Yeah. Just the name alone. Like uh, being a Raider fan, I'm a Raider. You know, but that's not. I mean, the history behind being a Raiders, though, too. But when you think about Redskins, there's actually a racial. Yes. You know, it's like a, a racial neg- thing. Yeah, it's know. a racial thing. But it's just like I never would have thought that they would change the name. I'm glad they're changing mm-hmm. the name. I love the name, the Washington team. I actually don't want them to change it. I want yeah, them to just leave bad. it as the Washington team, and I'll probably for the rest of my life still keep calling it that because I just think it's yeah. funny. And that represents it, it shows that it represents. Yeah, it's a like lot. our city, like yeah. it's Washington. But like I remember one time. A few years ago, I went on a cruise, and the cruise had, like, flew out of Florida, like, either Miami or Daytona or something like Orlando, something like that. And I remember, like, coming back from the cruise, and I'm walking to the airport, and I'm going to get my flight back back home. I'm in Florida, in the, okay. in the airport. And I'm walking to the airport, and I see this, like, old, like, an older mm. black couple. Mm. So you... And they got on head-to-toe Redskins They live in life, too, right? And I walked up to them <laughs> in the airport, and it was they was older. I walked up to him in the airport and I was like, hail to the Redskins. They was like, hail, hail to, to the, the Redskins. Redskins. <laughs> so, they going to represent for sure. Yes. And so I know that, like, I just, I didn't think they would change it because people really felt rooted in that name. And especially like the older people, the older black people. And I did see a little fight. In it was a fight. It was name, a bit yeah. of a fight. And but Even though I don't understand it, I see, you know. It, it, it feels, it sucks because... A part of me wants to say, even though this is what people be like, well, this is what white people say, right? A part of you, it does feel like, Mm -hmm. not that they're trying to, like, change our culture, but for some people, it it just does feel a little bit like it's something that you've known your whole life that's now changing. I I, I think because when you think about things that you've done in your childhood, Mm -hmm. whether it's go to school or play sports, like... Mm -hmm you're emotionally connected yes, to these you're things. Attached. So you so you don't want to just even though you know it's like morally wrong to say Redskins or that mm-hmm. name, you you still like holding on to mm-hmm. a feeling that you got when you was right. younger or exactly. when you was with the family, you know. I, when I seen those two older black people, when I seen them two older black couple in in the airport, it felt like, Oh, that's family. Mm-hmm. Like they probably going where I'm going, like or were I'm, they were they black Americans? Yeah, they were black Americans. See, but see, naturally, if you're a black American, you naturally feel like you're talking to a family member, anyways. Mm-hmm. Even if 
you have like a thought in your mind, okay, maybe I can't trust this person or maybe I don't mm -hmm. want to deal with this person. You naturally feel drawn because yes. you, you know you can relate. You know you come yes. from the same struggle. You come from the same. And, and it's like, and people don't know, like, you don't know HTTR. That's not really something they say, like, on the sports mm -hmm. broadcast and stuff. No, like, you, you only know HTTR if you know yeah. HTTR. So, yeah. like, when I've seen those people, I'm in the middle of a totally different state. I'm in the middle of a busy-ass airport full of all different types of people going mm -hmm. all different type of places. But I've seen these two older black people, black Americans, they got the HTTR stuff on. I say it to them, they say it to me. It's almost like we speak in yeah, our own language. It's almost it's like your own language. It's like where, wherever y'all going, I'm away with y'all because no, I thanks. feel like I'm gonna be safe with no, y'all. You're definitely you gonna know? be looked out for. You're definitely gonna be treated differently as if mm -hmm. from whether you was with a white person or mm -hmm. someone who's not from your city. Mm -hmm. you know, who's not from your city. So. But I would say that the difference between us and like white people is that the white people they still fight for that. They fight to hold. Like I understand that the name needs to be changed. It's morally wrong. It's something that needs to happen and we need to move forward. I feel like the white people be like, no, nah, that's our heritage. Like Confederate flags is our heritage. And, and like we how, can't change, we, we don't want to change it. We want to hold on to it. And that's how they feel about, um, and not just whites, but that's how a lot of people feel about whether it's the holidays or mm -hmm. any, and me, I don't really celebrate. I don't want to say I don't celebrate it cause I'm around family during these times. So technically a part of me is celebrating it but really i don't give a fuck about thanksgiving you know i don't give a fuck about christmas nope you know halloween we're dressing up so that's fun it's something that's expressive but easter i don't give a fuck about easter either mm -hmm. that's crazy to say you know but it, my family knows how i am i don't yeah. i don't give a fuck about any of these holidays so i don't give a fuck about any of these so holidays. I, I mean i don't necessarily like agree with people who don't want to let these things go especially if you're out here like i don't say complaining but speaking on things speaking on racial issues or mm -hmm. things that how your community is being affected I, I see i think we should all throw this shit away and start over you know yeah. personally and times but, change yeah like times change we were just talking about this like times change like just like how we're no longer we have fucking electricity we yeah. no longer using like lanterns yeah, and that's shit what I'm like, like and and I'm sure that with that, it was people that was like, I don't trust this electricity shit. No, like, facts. we've always used lanterns. We got to keep on using <laughs> yeah. them. You know, like. Yeah, facts, facts. And we have lanterns at our house, too. So. Yeah, like, I mean, it's it's parts of, like, New York, especially, like, in Brooklyn, like, really old parts where they still have gas, like, mm -hmm. gas lights and gas lamps where you could, like, see the flame. People have, like, kept them on their properties. But times change, and you also have to move forward, um, especially in terms of, things that are sort of morally wrong and repugnant. Like, I remember in 2014, this is like a really vivid memory in my mind, after Mike Brown had got mm -hmm. killed. I remember like that year for Thanksgiving. I always call it faux giving because yeah. it's fake to me. Yeah. I remember Love that year shit. I went to my mom's house and I well, pe something that a lot of people were doing and I did this too was you put like, a piece of clothing on the chair so you put mm. like a shirt or a jacket or a hoodie and you like keep that space empty and it was meant to represent all of the people and especially the black americans that can't be with their families mm. for whatever reason if they've been killed by the state if they've been locked up in prison yeah, um and i think that people also still do it to also like represent like the native americans who like didn't have a space at the table because you yeah. know the whole concept of this holiday is like we all come up to the table and we sit together and we say <laughs> oh the things God. that we're thankful that for. It makes me sick. And I remember that year that I did that, I had family members that were like upset. Yeah, like they were mad. Sure, they sure. were mad at me that I did that because they felt like, oh, you know, like, why are you doing this? This is almost like a oh like i'm trying to bring bad energy you know yeah, almost you like oh you're trying to right member. like i'm being the yeah. negative family member like i'm trying to bring that you know we all trying Your to drama, sit here yes mm -hmm. we all trying to sit here and say what we thankful for and you got the empty table the empty seat at the table talking about you know dead people and people that have died and blah say blah and i was just like well it's that real shit it's the truth it's true <laughs> right am <laughs> i lying well, what, do you, what do you want me to do? I'm not going to sit here and... I mean, we can enjoy each other's company, but yes. I'm not going to sit here and lie. No, and, I'm not. And, and, and I feel funk. like it's disgusting. It's gross. Like, this, this, I think it's disrespectful to our ancestors. It is. To celebrate this shit personally. And I mean, for a long time, I didn't even approach things like this. For a long time, I just kind of kept quiet. Mm -hmm. And was just like, you know, y'all want to celebrate y'all shit? Celebrate the celebrate. white man's holiday. But at the end of the day, like... I'm at a point to where now I'm just like, I'm all right. Yeah. This is bullshit. We, it's we can't, bullshit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I feel like... 
with you, you know, with your YouTube channel, what you do in terms of how you live your life and what you represent, the percentage probably, I would, I would say the percentage leans more towards the people not doing it in terms mm-hmm. of like who's actually active in the street. Not saying that there aren't people active in the street, but in terms of just the number wise, mm-hmm. it's harder for, I think, I, I see you a long time ago say something about like a change happened like 50 years from now. It might happen 50 years from now, 60 years from now, but we just have to stay the course. But I think that with our community, I'll just say it's brainwashed. I think a lot of it has to do with brainwash. I think a lot of it has to do with going back to slavery, which is why I love how you never stop talking about slavery, nope. you never stop talking about slavery. And I don't understand people who don't like to talk about slavery. I think that is, because if I got separated from my mother, if my mother was raped or, if, you know, my father was abused or, you know, or if I was chased by dogs, like, that will piss, it pisses me off now. It makes me emotional just to hear, like, people not wanting to talk about it. Because you're really saying, like, fuck what you, t- fuck what you went through. Fuck what you experienced. I don't care. Yeah, you just don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, it happened. And it's like, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, my mom, her side of the family's Creole. So mm-hmm. a lot of them are white passing. Mm-hmm. And so, and me, I'm probably the darkest mm-hmm. on my mom's side of the family. So that experience in itself was just... Over time, you're just like, okay, fuck what y'all talking about. Like, I kind of took that role. I want to say I took the role of the villain, but I have took that role of being, like, the negative Nancy. Even though I know I'm not a negative Nancy, even though I know I'm the realest, how you say you're the smartest person in the room, I know I'm the realest motherfucker in the room. But ultimately, like, I've definitely took that. I've definitely channeled the villain. Because I know, like, I don't want to come here and celebrate this shit. It doesn't... I, it just, it don't feel right. You're like, you don't sit right with my spirit. It doesn't. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, and I love soul food. You know what I'm saying? I love mm-hmm. soul food. But even when I think about like soul food, and even when I think about our communities and how we struggle health wise. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like my mom, she doesn't eat meat anymore. I still eat like chicken. I can't stop. <laughs> that nigga in me just, you, you know, I I, 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 I I love chicken, but I'm trying to. Um, I stopped eating meat, but you know, I, no, I'm, I, I still love the smell of chicken. You know, yeah. I like the taste. I just stopped eating it because. But I mean, it's not good. It's not good for the environment. No, it's definitely, it's definitely not. Stuff. It's definitely not good for the environment out here. Houston, Texas, so big on food, so it's everywhere you go, you see a cow farm, you're seeing chickens, you know. But it's all, I guess, progress, not perfection. But and just in terms of like our culture and like us as a community, like I hate to say like we're brainwashed because I don't like to ever make it seem like I'm talking down on my community. Because if anything, I should be able to speak on things in terms of like the negatives that come with myself mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying because if, if I speak on my community I'm definitely I'm speaking on myself as well because mm-hmm. I'm just a product of my environment I'm a product of my family but I, mean, I think we got to get some of this brainwashing out the way and is that at some point in time we're really going to have to start banging on people's heads in terms of like truth and you know and I mean you do that better than anybody so yeah I feel like I just yeah I feel like I just tell the truth and it's gonna reach who it's gonna reach. I have people tell me all the time, like, oh, I should change my delivery, or I should, you know, or I'm cursing too much, or I'm being too mean, or I'm being too aggressive. So what, they want or, you to be like Obama or something? Yeah, something like that. Like, you know, oh, well, if you were nicer, you know, you, you if you had a better delivery, or if you, and I think even that, I think there's a little bit of like, appeal like appeal to white people or no, like being facts. more appealing you know no, like facts. being more appealing like i, people, I think we're conditioned to be uh, yes to appeal to white like people, people just you know? want you to be appealing people want you to be and i also Likeable. think like as a woman yeah like they want you to make them feel comfortable yes they want me to make them feel comfortable they want me to be likable they want me to be palatable i've said this before i feel like women in general and especially black women and especially black american women there's an expectation that we are supposed to be nice that we're supposed to be mm-hmm. likable that we're supposed to make people feel comfortable we're supposed no, to take care sure, of people you know sure. like we're not supposed to be loud and yelling and cursing and angry upset have emotions we're supposed to be like yeah, come true. come to my bosom yeah. and let me mm-hmm. just pat you on the head and let me hold your hand and walk you through why yeah. racism is bad yeah. and i'm just like no nah. i'm like eat the rich fuck racism fuck white people all this shit goes back to slavery. Where are our reparations? Like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, like, reparations. We definitely need those. We need those. Like, like, Run me my check, please. And I just feel like people still, like, like how people don't want to talk about slavery. 
Like, oh, you need to let it go. It was in the past. What people don't... This is really something that people don't seem to understand. Shit from the past matters now. Like, nothing that's going on right now occurs in a vacuum, right? I mean, all this like, stems from the root, you know what I'm right. saying? Right. Like, you have to go back to the root. To the root to, cause. Yeah, so. And even, like, how you were talking about things that even, like, within our culture, like, for example, a lot of black Americans do not like dogs, there is I, a I don't I don't like dogs. There's a reason. Like I, I don't like dogs. There's a reason why niggas don't like dogs. Because dogs used to get sicked on us. Like I, I don't like dogs. I don't like ties around my neck. I don't like anything like I don't like anything. You you'll always see me with a crew. Now you might see me with a button up, but eventually it'll be off. Mm-hmm. Like it's something about dogs. I love water, but I'm not just going to go on the ocean and fucking swim mm-hmm. in the middle of the ocean. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm cool with a pool yeah. or some chill shit. But dogs, water, anything around my neck, that definitely stems from slavery. Yes. And without a doubt. It's, and generational trauma is real. I feel like there's a lot of talk now, like, generational trauma, breaking generational curses and all that. But, like, generational trauma is a real thing. You know, facts. And having, like, sure. because that is a held over behavior. Because, like, all of us that are black Americans that have an ancestor that knew. Because white people love dogs, yeah, right? Yeah. And white people have always they loved still dogs. still love dogs. Still and be they kissing still, dogs in yes, the mouth. I believe that white people have sex with their dogs. But that's just me. Like, I truly I, I, no, believe. No, no, like, no. There's definitely some cases of white people having sex with They dogs. really, like, they be kissing them in the mouth. Like, if, if and if you, you want to take it back to, like, the. It'd be too um, much. What's that? Cox's Mounds or something, whatever? The Caucus Mountains? Yeah, like, come on now. <laughs> or all these, like, white people love bestiality jokes and jokes about, like, being on the farm and, like, fucking sheep and, like, nah, all this weird... No, like, that's just weird. It's not funny. It's, <laughs> it's not funny. Like, it's not I'm funny. I'm only laughing like, because it's, it's weird. You know, it's, like, you can even watch some of, like, the old comedies from, like, the late 90s, early 2000s, the white people comedies. There's, like, a lot of bestiality jokes no, it's, in there. It's weird, yeah. Like, oh, and, like, put, put put peanut butter on your penis and, like, let the dog lick it off. Like, nah, all type of weird know. shit. I'm white people right. are fucking weird. No, thank you. And it's just, like, we have a lot of behaviors that... If we, you know, you have an ancestor that knew that the dogs could get sicked on them. Mm -hmm. And then they, even if it's not, even though they do, they've like scientifically found that there's like proof that like trauma, Mm -hmm. like leaves markers on like genes. No, it does for sure. So it's like actually scientifically held Mm -hmm. down. But even if you take that element out of it and you just look at like the psychology and like the sociology, like of our behavior. You know, you had a slave ancestor that knew that at any moment the dogs could get sicked on him and like rip him or her apart. And so then they have a child and they tell the child, stay away from dogs. Right. And then that child has a child and they say, mm-hmm. stay away from my, dogs. My mom doesn't like dogs. My grandma right. doesn't like dogs. And then you get all the way to us in 2020. I don't like dogs. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just like. And it's, it's not to say that I won't like pebble, pet a puppy or something, but ultimately, like, I just. I mean, I'll pet a puppy, but I'd prefer if they stayed away no, from no, me. Facts, like, no, facts. Whatever that um, rumor is or that fact of dogs having clean cleaner mouths, mouths than humans, that's just bullshit. White people made that up so they could kiss their dogs in the mouth. That's like, disgusting. You can smell, you can see, you can... It's not... Dogs lick everything. Like, they lick their own balls and... <laughs> like, they lick everything. Every, everything. They yeah, lick, I'm not... They'll lick your feet. They'll eat poop. They drink out the toilet. and everything. Like, I don't... Doing. It's disgusting. Like... I, I love water. I've always been like a little water baby, mm-hmm. but my mother is terrified of water. Okay. She will not get in water unless it's a pool. And even if it's a pool, she won't get up. She won't get in it past about here. Like yeah, see, she I won't get in like water. That. Like when I was younger, we used to go to Virginia beach and I loved the water. I'd be trying to like run out and let the waves crash yeah. over my head <laughs> yeah, and I'm thanks. rolling in the sand. I'm trying to swim. And my mother used to stand on the edge of the beach and she used to scream, Come back! I can't come out and get you. She got caught in a whirlpool when she was younger and stuff like that. So like, I mean, I don't ever see her jumping in oceans or lakes. I've seen her jumping pools and tan and things like that. But ultimately, like, I think that one experience really traumatized her. And again, like, that's even getting in again more into like the sociology or the Mm -hmm. psychology. Like, also, a lot of black people, a lot of black Americans, never learned how to swim because like there was nowhere for us to swim because yeah, like the pools, the pools were segregated yeah. right and the beaches were segregated and then when we did have some places to go like the manhattan beach there's been like a lot of news about this mm-hmm. beach in california called manhattan beach yeah. that this black couple had made a black only resort and then the city forcibly took the land like yeah. by eminent domain yeah, and made them like shut it down yeah. and so again that's a part of how the systemic 
issues, the systemic infrastructure, the systemic like keeping us out of things yeah. has had an impact because like for you to learn how to swim and get comfortable with water, you have to, you be, in have to be in the water. Yeah. Like you have to have a pool or you have to have a beach or you have to have something. And then if you do get in the water and you have a traumatic experience like getting caught in a whirlpool, yeah. mm-hmm. that's going to have an impact. It's going to fuck you up mentally. But sure. people don't want to talk about that type of stuff and they don't want to talk about the past and they want to say, oh, let it go. It's not a big deal. But then in the next breath, it's a stereotype that niggas can't swim and niggas don't like the water. And it's like... I mean, there's troops of stereotypes, you know, so it's... It is. No, I'm saying, like, it's it's a stereotype of just people not having the knowledge oh, yeah. of why mm-hmm. because they don't want to talk about it. They want to be like, let's not talk about that stuff. It's not important. Yeah, they want to push all this shit under the rug. You yeah, know, they want to push it under the rug and then just make it seem like oh, you know, niggas just naturally don't like the water type shit. Yeah. Like, there's reasons. Yeah, they just, yeah, I get what you're saying. And if we can't talk about those reasons, how are we going to get anywhere? Like, what you were saying about how, like, people are brainwashed and they don't even want to, like, dig into the root of the problem. I mean, even, even, when you problem. Bring, even when you bring up a problem and ultimately you see a person get irritated, you know, it's not, they're not getting irritated because, they're getting irritated because there's work that comes behind whatever you're trying to change. Like, mm-hmm. how, you, how your Toni Morrison video, Do Your Work. That's one of my favorite videos. I watch that video so many times. Like the I the, love that video. The, I listen to that speech once a year, at do, least. Do Your Work and uh, We're Different. I probably Those are probably, like, my two favorite videos of yours. And the do Your Work and We're Different. People love We're Different. <laughs> and it's just the whole, I think, I, I don't think people want to do the work. I no, think it, it takes, don't. you spend so much time, even with me, you know, I like to read. I, you know, I don't read everything. I like to write. I don't necessarily write every day. But, when you start doing these things, you notice how much work, like... It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work behind it, and then you get exhausted, you get tired, you get exhausted, mentally, you're mentally drained, you're like, fuck, you start doubting yourself, it's like... So I, I can see why they get irritated, I can see why it bothers them, but ultimately, like, these are the same people that are still posting things. You can't do all this posting, all this TV watching, giving all these opinions, yeah. you know, and then You're not- posting all these infographics. But you don't want to do the inner work. But you're work. not willing to do. And it is hard. And like, then you're also not, you're doing the inner work. You're also going to see things in yourself that you don't like. That you don't like. You know what I'm saying? That, that you have to deal with also. Yeah, and Because nobody's to, perfect. Nobody's and perfect. I think that's hard for people too because I also think with the internet and with social media, I think a lot of people are able to sort of live in a fantasy. Like they're able to. No, for sure. Build up an idea of. I mean, you. So, so say slavery would last, let's say, 500 years, right? Mm-hmm. So you're talking 500 years of, like, having to create your own culture, like, mm-hmm. you know, for us being taken away from where we were to being brought here, you know, mm-hmm. if that's what you believe in. But it's just, like, we literally have to create everything that we do. So I, I can see if someone looks at it now, if you're 70, 60, 80 years old, and you're kind of like, or 50 or 40, and you've been living your your whole life a certain way. Like, with my parents... My mom, she's more of like, I don't like using the word woke, but she's more of that one to where like my dad, he's more so like, he's whatever. You know, cause, mm-hmm. But it's not, he's not saying whatever because he doesn't care. He's saying whatever because you spend so many years of your life in these habits to where you notice that you can't continue these same habits if you're going to actually see things that you, you know, mm-hmm. want to see change or whatnot from, you know, I'm a contractor. You know, my dad's a contractor. I got in the company with him. He knows a cable company more than anyone, you know what I'm saying? But he'll never get a contract. He'll never get his own contract. He'll never... I mean, he he can work for good companies, you know what I'm saying? He can work for good people, you know, he's been doing that. He's been taking care of our family my whole life pretty much doing that. But just in terms of, like, his knowledge, you're never going to see... And, again, you, you can see with him, like, he'll battle with it. He'll, he'll like, oh, they got that contract because they white boys. Right. But then he... It kind of, like, that slave syndrome kind of, like, creeps back up and, like, now you're defending them in a different circumstance, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But that's just something that I think conditioned to do, you know? And yeah. and we, I think a lot of us, and again, because whenever I talk about black Americans, I'm always going to say us. I'm not, I'm never going to say them, you know what I'm saying? Like, but even a lot of us, that's, that's a lot of fear, you know what I'm saying? Like that fear is, a, I think fear might, fear is probably the thing that's stopping our community from, getting to where we want to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, we can have our own everything. I, yeah. We can have reparations if majority of us was putting pressure on yeah. this shit. I feel like sports is a prime example of this, yeah. right? And that's another thing, <laughs> you know, like, I'm torn between sports, you know, because 
you know, I love Kobe. You know, I love LeBron. I like the representation of how LeBron is with his family. I love mm-hmm. black excellence. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, if you ask me, I think being a black American is the greatest shit in the world. Mm-hmm. I, I, and I don't like to like. I do too. And even, <laughs> and even though like, I don't like to like beef or like be in competition with other ethnicities or races. At the end of the day, I feel like we, because of how we're at the bottom, mm-hmm. I feel like we're all also like. You, you're not fucking with us. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, that might rub people the wrong way to say that the world isn't fucking with black Americans, but... Everything in America, black Americans created. That's what I'm saying. But even, but even <laughs> like, in the world, though. Yes, but I just... I, so I feel like everything in America, we created. And then America is considered a world a world superpower. Yeah. And America has all this influence. So but that's black American it's, it's, culture. It's influence, and it's influence and power comes from our... From us. Comes our from creation. Our creation, our blood, our sweat. Mm-hmm. Whatever comes with us, that's what, in my opinion, is making the world go. Yes. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, it is not to take away from other blacks or whether no. it's Africans or mm-hmm. anything like that. Because I, I think they're great in their own right. Mm-hmm. But because we live in a world to where we're ignored the most... And yet we're we talk- still have this outsized impact. Yeah, we're talked down on the most. I don't. That's not for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's for that was set in place for us to just because there's no ceiling. Even when you talk about uh, Oklahoma and the uh, Tulsa massacre, mm-hmm. like there's no ceiling on our community as a people. Like so, if we get reparations, it's who knows what the fuck we're gonna create. Who mm-hmm. knows what we're gonna accomplish? You know what I'm saying? Like whether our grandchildren, our children. Because we're probably not going to see, like, the... Unless you believe in... I said to Queen, I think we're going to see reparations in our lifetime. No, I, well, I'm I, an optimist, though. No, no, I, I think we're seeing reparations in our lifetime, but I'm saying in terms of, like, the full... Oh, the effect. The full effect probably of, like... Not. No, not in our lifetime, no. I, unless, I mean, unless we're, like, you know, reincarnated. You know, I don't know, though, because, like, to be honest with you, things have shifted so rapidly. That's true. That's, that's just true. Just in the last... That's true. 10 to 20 years, just with the... Even with COVID, I think if you just take one year, right? Just, like, just with the one last one year, year, like I, like things change quicker Man. than I would have ever imagined. So a part of me even feels like I don't know, like maybe it even is possible to see the far-reaching effects. And, and not to sound negative, I, I definitely want to see that. Yeah. you know what I'm saying. But I mean, revolution work has sort of historically been this like sort of long, slow process, and I've I myself I've always looked at it that way. I never like I just there's certain things that I never would have thought mm-hmm. that I would have seen like to uh, like I've told people that in like in 2014 when I first started my YouTube channel it was still an argument with people that racism even existed like it was That's crazy. like it was even like then really felt like pushing a fucking boulder uphill and that co- see, like, that's what I'm saying like that comment enough like will make me just throw my hands up like fuck like, like back then it was like such a big a big issue of people being like no because like in 2014 we still had barack obama mm-hmm. as president right mm-hmm. so even back then it was people that was like no we have a, a black president racism is not real mike brown got killed because of this reason trayvon martin got killed because of that reason and so it, it was so the conversation in 2014 was racism exists right yeah, mm-hmm. and so if you had asked me in 2014 if somebody had like came back in a time machine yeah. and been like yeah. in 2019 it's going to be global protests all over the world for george yeah. floyd mm-hmm. and it's going to be a pandemic and it's going to be a huge racial reckoning and they're going to change the name of the redskins i'd have been like you're high yeah, okay. like yeah, that's, that's you're smoking crack like yeah. that's never going to happen like <laughs> yeah, it that's sounds never gonna happen. World, for sure. <laughs> and so, and it happened. Yeah. It happened. So you know, I don't know. I don't. I I really don't know. Like shit. And I do think with technology and with everything, like things are becoming like much more accelerated. The process of change mm-hmm. seems like it's yeah. becoming more accelerated. Yeah. And I also feel like getting into what you were just saying about fear and people being afraid, like. I don't want to say that like the the masses or like the vast majority of people have always been afraid, but again, like if you look back in history, when Martin Luther King was alive, most people hated him. Yeah, I hated him. Yeah. Like yeah. his public approval rating was like I don't know, fifteen percent, seventeen percent. Even amongst other Black Americans, people looked at Martin Luther King as a troublemaker. Yeah, like, nice. oh, they're troublemakers. Yeah. Like. And no, no disrespect, no disrespect to those people, because again, like even those people, like imagine, you know, it's 1962, 
and somebody comes back in a time machine and they say, listen, in 1968, we're going to have actual civil rights legislature yeah. that's protecting our right to vote and that is going to dismantle Jim Crow. They probably would have been like, yeah, OK, <laughs> whatever you say, whatever you say. <laughs> Or, you know, imagine, you know, 400, 500 years of slavery and somebody be like, at some point, slavery is going to end and black people are going to black Americans are going to be free Mm -hmm. and black Americans are going to have all this outside influence and culture. That would have seemed crazy. That would have seemed. And even when we weren't slave, we had influence. Right. You know, like like, it's, it's, it's just something that, you know, perspective, you know, hindsight is 2020, as they say, like mm -hmm. perspective. And so that's part of what. I think also allows me to kind of like keep going and keep remaining optimistic because things are constantly changing. And we, you have no choice but to be optimistic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We I mean, otherwise, what? You just like kill yourself? Yeah, like, right, you know. like, I just, I can't, I can't go on. Like, shit's not going to change. And that's, you know, it makes me sad when I hear people be like, we're never going to get reparations. Are we never going to get this? Like, why are you preemptively saying what's never going to happen? I, I, I think, I mean... I think that's also like training, you know what I'm saying? Like training to like being taught to give up because I mean, honestly, like how many of our parents like had dreams to do what they're doing right now? Like my dad, he does cable, you know, he makes a lot of money, but his dream wasn't to be a cable guy. You know what I'm saying? A lot of our parents are doing what they have to do, you know, to, and they've always done that, you know, so I don't, it's true. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a lot that comes with it. I just think that. I, I wish that, I mean, I don't want to say I wish because I see it happening, but I, I think I wish we were a little bit more, um, what's the, I don't want to say feistier, but I wish we were just a little bit more about it, you know, in terms yeah. of, like, I guess because you, you. But I think that gets back to what you were saying about fear. Like, you know, I look at sports, the vast majority of our most popular American sports leagues are pretty much populated by black Americans. Um, and so there is a part of me that feels like, you know, annoyed <laughs> that like like LeBron was talking about some oh we not gonna play right like we gonna that, protest that annoyed the f- like we gonna boycott we not gonna play until so what did you think about that LeBron situation? I that, thought that pissed me. Well, off. he said that the person that got him to back off from that was Barack Obama, which I believe because Barack Obama is a moderate, he is a centrist. He said himself, he's biracial, like he's a biracial Kenyan American. Barack is not living for black Americans. Like he's not living for black Americans. <laughs> he's even said himself that, you know, he's he's status quo and that even during his presidency where they had all these like strong majorities and shit that like things didn't get done the way they could have got done because, you know, he believes in the status quo and he didn't think that certain things would be able to change. And yeah. so I believe that he probably got in LeBron's ear on some this is not the way to go about it. And I believe that LeBron being the person that he is, he's somebody that obviously looks up to Barack Obama mm-hmm. and, you know, whatever, whatever. And I think he's also respected within that. Yeah, within that circle yeah. or whatever. So I could see him being like, whatever you know. Whatever they got going on. Okay, you know, you telling me you don't think this is the right way to go about it, so I'm going to back off. But I do wish that they had stuck to that because I do think that it's true. Like They didn't play, what, one game? One, Only one game. That... that... And professional sports make so much money, and money talks and bullshit walks. That, that one game did nothing. Nothing. That but if game. y'all have really said, well, we're not going to play. We're not going to play. If the football players really said, we're not going to play. And I know people are always, you know, they always say, like, well, that's their job. They need money. They need money, too. You know, yeah, they got to yeah. take care of their families, too. And and I, and it's true. It's hard. More like, money, more expenses, so I get it. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like being stuck between a rock and a hard place because on the one level, I do sometimes wish that they would sort of, you know, put their money where their mouth is or, like you said, yeah. be a little bit more feisty or be a little bit more about it and be like, well, we're not going to play anymore until so this. Do you think that's what's, like, stopping everyone from a lot of the players from acting yes, in that way. Yes, I think they're scared. That's fear. Like, yeah. I think they're afraid. I think they're afraid to lose their jobs. I think they're afraid to lose their paychecks. And it's true. Like, a lot of these people, like, especially you look at the NFL, a lot of these people are, in fact, people that came from nothing. Yeah, for sure. And now, now they have for money. Sure. They're taking care of whole entire families. For sure. And they're like, I can't get fired, basically. No, no, like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I can't get cut. I can't yeah, no, have can't. I true. can't have what happened to Colin Kaepernick happen to me and because it's, it's I'm supporting one, people. It's, it's one true. thing to go from being like poor to being rich to being poor. Because you know? that's really what you're going to be if you yeah. decide to 
I guess going against the system. Yeah, or... go against the grain or go against the system. So I understand it, but at the same time, it is true that in order for things to change, you do need some people that are willing to do that. Yeah. Like and Martin no Luther King way. got literally assassinated. Yeah. Like Malcolm X got literally assassinated. Yeah. Not saying that people should kill athletes or anything like that, but you but have to. But it comes have, with the right. Like you have to have some people that are willing to go against the grain and that are willing to put their jobs on the line, mm-hmm. their livelihoods, their lives. Yeah sort of to move all of us forward I guess you need some people that are willing to do that and I do think I don't want to say that there's less people that are willing to do that in 2021 do you do you think that like black Americans um struggle when it comes to I mean because I mean obviously I say I would say that we probably don't know better there's a lot of us that don't know any better or mm-hmm. not educated enough to like make to know what to do in terms of like money or you know, better in our community, but do you think that we kind of lack in terms of like the family area? Even though we have our family yes. get-togethers, even though we have our cookouts, we go to churches on our Sundays and the Bible studies, whatever that comes with the Black American community, do you think that we still lack? Yeah, I think we still lack. Um, I From feel what like other communities don't have, at least. I think that we lack... So I was actually talking about this with Queen. Mm-hmm. I said I feel like Integration was a mistake. It was. And I feel like a lot of the ideology of integration and sort of like talented 10th stuff Mm -hmm. is something that's really pervasive in our community. And instead of this idea of, you know, black American and we have a lot, we just have a lot of isms, not to say that other people don't have isms, because I know that other people in other groups have isms. So I'm not trying to say that this is like a specifically black American problem or a pathology. But we do have a lot of isms within our community. And I think that, like, Talented 10th ideology says that only 10% of the race can make it. Like, it says, it basically says that only 10% of black Americans can make it. So that's 90% less the bulk (laughs) of the rest of us that, you know, and the whole concept is supposed to be like, you know, the talented 10th, the upper 10%, yeah. they're mm-hmm. going to get to the top and they're going to pull everybody else up. But that is yeah. never yeah. how that type that's of, you know, how it works. that's it's not, not how it works. It's not set up that way for that's, you to... That's not how it works. Because even I, when you do get in the circle or even when you do get in that space of like success, you're there's a whole different level that you can't access. Access. Because, because of, you're black. Yeah, you're a black American. You're black. And so I do feel like collectively there's a lot of that same type of thinking that the best and brightest of the black Americans, the people that go to the Ivy League schools Mm -hmm. or the people that have all the athletic talent or the people that have the musical talent or the people that have, you know, that's not every, that's not a lot of people. It's not. not. Like if everybody's playing football and basketball, only a handful of people are really going to make it. If everybody's doing music, only a handful of people are going to make it. Only a handful of people are going to be able to go to the Ivy League school. And they, I mean, they choose on how to like, on who to let in. On who to let in, yeah. Because Jackie Robinson, he wasn't the greatest baseball player at his time, but you know, he was... And a lot of that is also influenced by isms, Mm -hmm. like colorism, you know, sexism. If you learn more about, for example, um, the Southern leaders, the the Christian conference, which Martin Luther King was a part of, they mm-hmm. didn't allow women yeah. to be leaders. Yeah. It was all mm-hmm. it was only men, you know, mm-hmm. because it followed the structure of the Christian church, which at the time didn't allow women to yeah. be leaders, didn't mm-hmm. allow women to be ministers. Yeah. And so that's something that we still deal with in our communities, for sure, for sexism, sure. misogyny colorism rosa parks was chosen to be the face of the bus boycott and she, and she was not the first mm-hmm, right no. the fr- one of the first black american girls to actually do that was claudette calvin mm-hmm. who was a 17 year old dark-skinned unwed single mother right mm-hmm. so they said she can't no, be the face not, of our yeah. movement how about we get this light-skinned long hair married prim mm-hmm. and proper rosa parks yeah, of course. we're gonna make her the face of our movement and not to take nothing away from rosa parks but like there's a reason why rosa parks became the face of yeah. the movement mm-hmm. and we've never dealt with a lot of these issues mm-hmm. and so now in 2021 we're still yeah. dealing with them and i do think that again like it's like a rotten tooth right like it's like an abscess you got you can't just be like okay we're just going yeah. we're just gonna put the silver nah, cap on nah. it <laughs> it's gonna keep rotting yeah, underneath keep... and i feel like there's a lot of stuff that is still rotting and that people just don't want to deal with 